Hello, my friends. May God bless all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus and may bless you indeed. It's what we desire the most, that the word, the word which he professed and that we preach, may this word come through this platform here, transform lives, because the word of God is enough, it's powerful enough to do way beyond than what we hope or want. However, God promises here in His Word to pour out the Holy Spirit when He says, I will put my Spirit within you. My Spirit and cause you to walk in my statutes and you, you keep my judgments and do them, which means God wants to resolve our biggest problem and your biggest problem is your interior, it's not your exterior. The problem in the marriage, the love life, a material financial problem or unemployment, the physical needs, the need of water and bread, whatever is your need, if it's physical, your exterior need, you first have to resolve it in your interior. First, you have to resolve it in your interior. It's pointless for you to try and be beating your head against a brick wall, which means it's pointless for you to try and resolve the exterior if your interior is not well. That's the reality. If your interior is ill, then your exterior will reflect that. There's no doubt about that. And that's the reason why God gives us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a doctrinal option, but it's a need in order for us to have eternal life. Eternal life, because without Him, it's impossible for a person to get to have eternal life. This is the reality. It's impossible for a person to be saved. It's impossible for the person to achieve eternality with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's impossible. The Holy Spirit, what does He do? He speaks in our spirit. He speaks to our spirit. He guides. He leads. He teaches. He exhorts, He tells us what is wrong and He shows when the path we are following is not the right one. How many times I myself experienced this, sometimes even thinking I was doing what was right, but then the Holy Spirit was there making me feel uncomfortable because when we do what is right, we are comfortable. When we do what is right and just and fair and honest, then we are at peace with ourselves because we owe nothing to nobody. But when we do something that is not according to the Word of God, then whoever has the Holy Spirit is touched by Him in order to see or to feel bad and uncomfortable. And then we have to stop and turn our lives around to make a 180 degree turn. Therefore, my friend, pay close attention, please. If you want to have a life with quality, a life with quality, a life of peace, 
then you have to walk in righteousness. If you walk in unrighteousness, how can you have peace? If you are in debt, Jesus said that we have to give to Caesar what is Caesar's. That's what is fair. Give to God what is God's. So, if you want to resolve your situation, your life, your sad life, your life full of obstacles, today you are okay, the other day you are not okay anymore, and, and the other one, and that's how you live. If you want to change the situation and start a new year with a new life indeed, then you need the Holy Spirit. The church, the religion, advices are not going to resolve your problems. They are not. I teach the Word of God. I preach the Word of God. But only God is able to do this great work, which is to give you the Holy Spirit to those who hear the words, the preaching here on this, on this platform. So, you who are watching me now and you are suffering for so long, how long have you been suffering for? Groaning. You are groaning out of pain because of your problem, your love life problem, your spiritual problem, your emotional problem. Tell me. You carry a bunch of problems around and you don't know how to resolve them. Sometimes people think the following, oh, I will have money, I will have financial condition, I will have comfort, I will have everything I always wanted in this world, I will eat from the best in the best place and have the best car, best house, best clothing, I will have everything of the best. However, they may even meet all of their exterior needs, but there in the interior, they know that they are not well. They feel, for example, anxious. They are always anxious. They cannot keep a relationship. They have a partner that cheats on them, that is not faithful to them. Yes or no? This is terribly painful. And how can you resolve this problem? With money. Is it possible by any chance to buy somebody's love? Is it possible to buy peace? Is it possible to buy the Holy Spirit? No. A thousand times, no. You know it's not possible. You are not going to resolve your interior problem by meeting your exterior needs, which means attending to the needs of your body, your physical body, your material life. No, you are not going to be able to. Only when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, that's when you walk in righteousness and you do what is right. You are going to be instructed, guided, led by God, by the Spirit of God. And then, yes, you will walk at peace, you have peace, and with peace comes joy. With peace comes joy. When we are at peace, we have joy, we are happy. This is what happiness is. Happiness is not to simply have a nice marriage. No. Happiness is when you are happy within yourself because there is no point in being happy on the outside if you are unhappy on the inside. So, know this. If your problem is interior and you know you are aware of that, you have the conscience of your flaws, of your mistakes. You do not want to make a mistake anymore. Sometimes you do things that you didn't want to do, but then later on it's too late. You've already done it. The flesh is weak, isn't it? Old. 
and then the person ends up going through a path that is evil and then comes weeping and lamenting the suffering comes the pains and so on this is how it usually works when god when we speak of the faith faith in god excuse me please when we speak of faith we are talking about life life from here in this world life in this world the plenitude of life jesus said i came to bring life and life to the full but this only happens when the holy spirit is inside of the person as long as the interior problem is not resolved which is spiritual then the exterior problem won't be resolved either it will not be resolved it's pointless to have all the money in the world you may have a position you may have success you may be a person who is liked by everybody in society famous and so on but there will come a time which you are going to realize well indeed i am a very sad and empty person void which is the problem of people who suffer with depression a person who suffers with depression is empty they don't see any meaning in life they see no meaning in anything in this world the world for them truly is gray there's no color they don't know what joy is and this is so strong that there are people that feel such a great pain in their soul that's so void that they end up hurting the physical body hurting the body okay there is nothing that my body gives me that brings me any interior satisfaction so let me hurt my body because i'd rather feel pain in my flesh than to feel this pain in the soul so they are there cutting themselves they self harm in order to compensate to lessen the interior pain they were cheated on you who were cheated on you know that you were cheated on and the person that you loved that you thought wow now i found the right person for me and when you least expected you see that that person is not faithful to you it's a terrible pain a cruel pain isn't it thank god thank god thank god i don't have this problem thank god by the way we don't have this problem esther and i don't have it people in the church cheat they do silly stuff in church but they are not cheating on me they are cheating on god because the church is not mine they are not taking anything from me however when the person is cheated on by someone they loved they dedicated their love to somebody else they dedicate themselves they put all of their strength to please that person and then later on they find out that they were cheated on by that person it's the same thing here with god my friend this is how it is with god as well that's how it is he speaks about israel he speaks of his own people whom he took out of egypt he brought them home as a person who was lost as someone who had no direction as a child that was thrown on the streets and they are there bleeding without being taken care of without a mother a father so he went there took that child brought them home took care of them 
healed their wounds, gave them the best, the best of this land. They grew up, became strong, with good appearance, beautiful, handsome. But when He, the Lord, wanted to make a covenant with them, to marry them, because He loved them very much, then they gave themselves to strangers, to others instead. And this is how the Israelites were. And this is also the situation of many people who have come to the church and they were wounded in pain. And afterwards, after they rebuilt their life and their exterior improved, they left they turned their back to their husband, which is the Lord. So if you read the chapter of Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel in the Old Testament, chapter 38, you are going to see that, this is story. Beautiful, isn't it? Very beautiful story, a love story indeed. And you know what this means. You will understand because you, you love as well, but you are not loved. And the worst thing there is on earth is for you to dedicate love to somebody and that person cheats on you. What a painful thing it is. When we are young, we go through situations like that. I've been through this myself. Oh, my Heavenly Father. But when we are young, we give ourselves without any restrictions and we end up we end up getting disappointed see my friend that god in order for us to be in order for us to be faithful to him he gives us the holy spirit without him it's not possible for you to remain married to Him. Without the Spirit of God, there is no way for a person to keep their salvation. Of course, if the person in the moment of their death, as it happened with the thief on the cross, if they accept Jesus, confess their sin, Lord have mercy on me, remember me when you enter paradise, in the last moment there he was saved. He wasn't baptized in water, he wasn't baptized in the Holy Spirit, so he right there converted and went to heaven. However, the problem is when we continue to live in this world and then what happens is exactly that. There comes a point that if the person doesn't have the Holy Spirit, they will end up surrendering, giving up to the vanities of this world, to the lust of the world, because that's how the devil works. He offers the glory of the world. And once the person closes a deal with him, it's over. They are already in his hands and he will play with them. So, you who are watching me now, pay attention. God, God is our husband. He said, I will put my spirit within you and cause you, I will cause, my spirit will cause, through my spirit, I will cause you to walk in my statutes, in my ways, and you will keep my judgments and do them. And that's when indeed, yes, when you have a new heart, then your heart can be glued to God's. When you have a new spirit, then your spirit is submissive to the Holy Spirit. And then your body, your exterior will be grateful because you will live intensively here on earth. But first, don't forget, resolve your interior problem so that then 
you may resolve the other problems, all the other problems in your exterior as well. Thank God. Did you understand? Do that before you start a new year, before trying to resolve the physical problem, resolve the spiritual problem first. Insomnia, fear, nervousness, constant headache, anxiety, fear, doubt, insecurities. You are attached to things and people easily, trying to suffocate the scream that your soul is about to, to give on the inside, inside of you. It's not going to resolve. Only when you receive a new heart, a new soul, and a new spirit, which the Lord promises to those who seek Him. May God bless you all. And do not forget that this is the last week of the year, the last week of 2022. And we are going to start a new year soon. Let us determine that a new life will also happen for you from this new year because we are going to be stretching out our hands in order for you to receive the Holy Spirit in the New Year's Eve night vigil. Bishop Julio Freitas will be on Mount Hermon with this mission to stretch out his hand towards you, to all of us, okay? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.